Hey guys, how you doing? I love this time of year. People are parent birds and uh, we're hopeful. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll be able to raise, raise a, a champion. How hard is it to do? I, I'm, I think uh, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different methods to go about it. The reason I do this channel and the reason I make these videos is I'm trying to help, help beginners in the sport. Um, I have bred, bred pigeons, but I've never bred, I would say, a champion bird. Um, you know, I think for, for the majority of us, that's a, that's a once in a lifetime thing. And I'm not talking about a bird that'll win a, a 300 mile Hoosier race. I'm talking about a bird that wins multiple times, multiple times in, in, in the front. Those super pigeons, they're rare, they're few and far between. For most of us racing in a club and combine, um, a young bird team of average pigeons is, is really all we need. And, and that's not, not really hard to get. And what we hope to do is improve on that average. And there's a lot of different ways to, to improve on the frequency of getting an above average pigeon. Breeding, breeding champions uh, together uh, is, is, is a good method. Uh, that's something that Mike Gannis does. Um, you know, if you'll remember, this is going back, I think the first year that he competed in Victoria Falls, he had two 24 bird teams um, and he wasn't anywhere in the top. His birds just didn't have what it took on that course with those conditions to, to do well. And so what he did is he went and bought the first place bird, the second place bird, the first average speed, the first three, I think, average speed birds. And he did that uh, multiple years in a row. He, he bred, the, I think out of 10 races at Victoria Falls, he bought the winner nine times. Um, and and that's, a, that's a great way to go, especially if you've got the money and you've got deep pockets, you can get those, those winning pigeons. Luckily, for all of us, that might work one out of a hundred times or something. Um, I want you to just think of for a minute if that actually worked and worked uh, more frequently than that. Um, and, and really it would, it would kind of be the, the death of the sport because the people with the deepest pockets would buy the champions and, and pair the champions and they would have the, have the best birds. The reason that only works one out of a hundred times or one out of 50 times, we're working against biology. Uh, the species wants to survive and the best opportunity for the species to survive every time offspring are produced is if they're as genetically diverse as possible. Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna go into the details, but that, that's biological fact. Um, we're, we're fighting against diversity when we're, when we're breeding pigeons, trying to breed a champion. Even when you pair those winning pigeons together, it's still gonna be one out of 100 or one out of 50 might, might be good. The rest are just gonna be average pigeons. And that's, you know, just being observant and looking. Anytime you pair birds, you raise those babies, you gotta test them, you gotta test them out. And you're testing them to see, to find that next great pigeon. That's why someone like Mike can send 50 birds to the to Hoosier. He's got, he's got the money and, and he, like all of us, he needs to test them. He's not gonna fly them himself. I don't think he races in a club and combine, maybe he does, but so he sends them out and he's just testing birds. He's looking for that next champion bird. And if he, he's got the money and, and, and the ability to send 50 birds to the Hoosier, more power to him. I think, I think that's great. You know, the majority of us, I've never sent a bird to the Hoosier. Some people, you know, like Cody, I talked about him in one of the videos a couple of videos ago, sent one bird. We send small teams really because that's what we can afford. Yeah, I think if we could afford to send more, we would. All right, so Mike's way strategy, his idea is to breed the best of the best. I, I think Frank's amazing. He's done amazing things in the pigeon sport. He says pack as many champions in the pedigree as you can. The, the problem with that is, is for a new, a, new, a new pigeon fancier is just the cost of doing that. Champions aren't going to be for sale you know, unless you pay a crazy amount of money. But you can buy sons and daughters off champions and you can buy grandsons and granddaughters off champions. And in fact, you can buy those on Frank's website and the other auction websites. That, that, that's, you know, that's how they make, make their money is selling sons and daughters off, off and, and grandsons and granddaughters off, off really good pigeons. What makes me hesitate in, in, in that approach is the majority of the time, birds are bred for stock and they're bred for stock sometimes two generations before they're before they're selling pigeons and the best pigeons in the world are going to produce more mediocre and average pigeons than they do than they do champions the champions are going to be few and far between i think one way to look at it is 
when you when you you you, you breed that champion bird to a to another another bird. Hopefully, the other bird's a champion bird too, and you can breed champions together. But they're 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 losing 50% of their genetic genetics when when they breed. And so, if you've lost 50% in the first generation, and you're buying a grandchildren, and, and the, the the child didn't race, and the grandchild didn't race, and you're buying that grandchild to use as breeding he's lost 50%, he's lost 75% of the genetic material of, of the original bird you're breeding back to, or you're interested in breeding back to. And if, if the, the, the 75% that's been lost is what makes them a good pigeon, a good racing pigeon, a champion pigeon, then, then you're kind of you're kind of hosed. I might not be able to afford a, a champion bird, um, that flew in in the Hoosier, the first place bird in the Hoosier. I might not be able to, you know, import a bird from Belgium that that flew against 10,000 pigeons, but I can get birds that flew in my club and combine, and and breed them together. And and really, that's 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 what I've done here. Um, I've got a, a cock and a hen. Uh, this cock is is a bird that Quintero sent last year, uh, in in 2023. It was on the team, and it was it was the the most consistent cock that that we had in the loft. Uh, it, it did win uh, a combine uh, in the early race, like one of the first races, the short races. It was the first bird to the loft, I think two times. In the 300, at the very end of the season, it was the first bird to the loft, and I, I believe the second bird in the combine. Uh, so uh, so a, a really good cock that did really good on my course. Uh, the hen is from 2022, and she's the most consistent hen from 2022. Uh, and and she had a very similar race uh, series. Uh, she did really good early on in the short races, and then she was one of the first birds to the loft in the in the last race in the 300. So I know they that the, both of these birds have what it takes to fly well on my course. Uh, and so when I decided to to breed pigeons, Larry had a bunch of these hutches. Uh, he had four of them, and I just went to his house and 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 he he, he loaned it to me. These things are like 35 years old. There's room for three pigeon, uh, three pairs in each one. I took out the divider that would have been right here just to give them more room, uh, and I just have I just have the one pair, and I'm 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 hoping to send two birds to the Martinez Classic, uh, and the reason I pick Martinez Classic is it's a local race and it shares race stations that I know that these birds have have done well on, um, and it's flying through the Nevada desert up over the mountains. It's a very tough course. Um, and, and these, these birds both did it well. And so I'm hoping their, their babies will do it, do it as well. Uh, so this would be breeding best to the best. Um, that's a, that's a common, uh, method that, that people use to, to breed good pigeons is, is best to best. I had unlimited funds and I could go buy the, the first pigeon in the, in the Hoosier and the first pigeon in all these races and, and breed. I, I could, you could breed a champion, a lot of average pigeons from, from those birds. Um, and, and no matter what method you use, you're going to produce a lot of average pigeons. What are some other line breeding? Um, I, I really, it's interesting. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how 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 Kevin and 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 Steve at, at Danza Loft do. They're line breeding around uh, ironclad, and so I, I kind of drew some stuff on a whiteboard. I think this is correct based on what Steve said. All right, so full ironclad, half an ironclad, a fourth. So their pigeons are going to be a fourth ironclad from the son of ironclad, fourth ironclad from the daughter of ironclad there. And here you've got half, a fourth, an eighth. So an eighth of an ironclad, something like that. All that six sixteenths, right? So it's going to pass on three sixteenths ironclad if my math is right. But they're 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 producing they're going to produce babies that are I think a little more than than 50 percent ironclad genetics, trying to duplicate the genetics that 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 they have from ironclad, and that's that's one way that's one way to go is, is line breeding around a around a, a really a really great pigeon. Another way to to breed pigeons and and what what some people do I don't I you know Greg McKnight I don't know who he is uh, I just I've heard Graham talk about him. Um, and, and I looked up a couple of his birds and, and his families of birds. Uh, Muleman's were one of the families. We'll look at a couple of his pedigrees, but he breeds along, along family lines, um, trying to keep them straight. And I think that, 
that's one way one way to go. Um, and I and I think it, it it makes sense to me. If you've got a couple families in your loft that are very closely bred, you know, I, I would I, if if that was a situation I was in, I would take my first round and cross those two uh, kind of inbred families or line bred families together for my race team. And then second round, I, would, I wouldn't cross them. I would, I would breed, breed straight. So that first round crosses for the race team. And then the second round, you breed them back into family. So if you, you had a small loft, a small breeding operation, you could have these two families. It's important that even that second, third round that you race them and only, only breed back to the family, those best birds. When you're comparing those, pull the best from the family. Don't really necessarily compare them to the crosses because the crosses should race better. Uh, when the races are over, I, I, you know, I would, I would probably sell the ones that did really good from that first round and work on your, on your family, on your family lines uh, and keep those families straight. And then the next year, cross them again, cross the pigeons representative of the family back together. We're trying to increase the frequency of getting that champion bird. One out of 70 pigeons will be great, or one out of 50 pigeons will be great, one out of 20 pigeons will be great. And I don't know what that number is for like a Mike Gannis or a Frank McLaughlin, or I do know that, that Mike raises a lot of pigeons. Uh, you know, in, in one of the interviews he did, he says he culls a lot of pigeons. I will put a link to the videos I'm talking about in the description. Frank's video where he's talking about best of the best. Mike's video where he says he culls a lot of pigeons because even when you pair the best together, they're gonna produce a lot of, you know, mediocre birds that don't meet up to his standard. The video's a little bit jumbled. Uh, I hope it helps. I hope breeding's going well for everybody. There's a lot of different ways to go about it. I don't know that, that for the average club and combine, I don't know that it matters what method you pick. Um, I'm pretty confident if you take whatever cocks and hens you have in your loft, you pair them, you just throw them in, let them pair up however they want. They'll, 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 they'll produce birds that, 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 that average pigeons that, that can race and, and you might get lucky and produce a, a super. You know, a team full of average pigeons, especially in, in racing in the club and combine, a team full of average pigeons, you can, you can win and, and do well. And, and hopefully you get one that's really consistent, kind of like we had last year with Jason Jordan's bird. Uh, that, that's scored in every race. Um, and, and that's really what we're looking for is trying to get those, those pigeons that are kind of above average. Is, is, was that bird a, a super pigeon? Was that bird a, a, you know, it's hard to say. Um, and the, the real reason, um, I, I would definitely say it's an above average pigeon. Was it a super? I don't know. I think the, the, the biggest problem with, with, you know, my club, for example, is there was only three young bird flyers. The combine, I think we had 19 total lofts uh, flying. Um, the competition's pretty small. You know, that's why I think a loft full of average pigeons, you know, young birds especially, so much of it's handler driven with young birds, especially the early races. The longer the races get, I think more genetics play a, play a role. There's a lot of different, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different methods, a lot of different ways to approach it. Uh, there's not one surefire way to, to, to do it. So, um, how do you decide what birds to pair together? Just interested in the comments, how do you decide? Are you breeding along families? Are you breeding crosses? Are you breeding best to best? What method do you use uh, in, in, in trying to increase the frequency of breeding that super pigeon? I just, just be interested, interested to hear. I think people that make videos, people that write articles, people that talk about pigeons, they talk kind of in absolutes, like this is the way to do it, and, and that, that's just not the case. There's a lot of different ways to, to, to get there. There's an insane amount of luck involved in breeding pigeons. Uh, there's some things we can do to try to improve our luck, you know, and, and that's some of these methods. I hope that's helpful. If anybody has any questions, you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm excited. I think uh, I, did, I did reach out to all the, all the guys that are sending birds next year. I've heard back from most of you. If you haven't responded, check your email. Uh, I think we're going to get birds uh, towards the middle, the end of February. Uh, first couple of birds are going to come in. But I've got 24 guys that are each going to send me one pigeon. It should be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Uh, we're flying out of the small four bay at Loft. Um, and I'll try to document as much as I can the process. Uh, but I uh, hope everyone's uh, holidays were good and everyone had a good new year. And hope breeding goes well for everybody. Take care.